I recently realized that context is still one of the core concepts in Dialogflow that uh, learners of Dialogflow Essentials are struggling with. So I wanted to record a video series specifically on context to really explain the basics and how to apply context and how to use them. So in this first video, I'm just going to give you an intro over what contexts are and show you a basic example. And then in the next videos, we'll take it uh, step by step and uh, look at more use cases. So first of all, uh, what are contexts? So they are similar to natural language context. I took this example from the Dialogflow documentation. If someone says to you, they are orange, it implies that there is a context of the conversation. There must have been something that you've been speaking about before that uh, allows us to interpret what they mean. So someone wouldn't come up to you and just say they are orange. They would only say that as a follow up to something that has been said before. For example, we might have been speaking about fruit in which case the oranges are orange and they would uh, refer to oranges or fruit in particular. Or maybe we spoke about cars and the cars are orange or houses, I don't know, but there is a context. So, and specifically now in dialogue flow, context control the flow of a conversation. How we do this is every intent can have output context and input context. So, for the output context, it, uh, it defines which intent can be triggered next. So basically, an intent recognizes what the conversation is about, and then it gives an output context into the conversation, which then persists this context over a specific life lifespan. And then every other intent that gets triggered once a context is present will be filtered by this context essentially. So the input context of an intent uh, must uh, be present in the conversation currently for that, co for that uh, intent to be triggered. I will show an example uh, soon and then it should become even clearer. Uh, just to let you know, so there's a secondary purpose of context and dialogue flow. So first of all, they control the flow of the conversation, but they can also be used to transport information. So in this example, uh, they are orange. Maybe in the case that we're speaking about fruit, the context could also contain a parameter that tells us, okay, the context is fruit, uh, but specifically we've been speaking about oranges. And then you can sign, you could even use a, an entity fruit and assign it to that context. Um, more about that uh, later. So now we'll stick with the basic example, which is uh, this one, which is, is also taken from the documentation of Dialogflow. So this is a bank bot, so to say. And the first thing that the user says here is tell me about my checking account, in which case this checking info intent is triggered and it has now an output context of checking. So for the next uh, couple of steps in the conversation, this context is present, indicated by the arrow here, which means that for the next thing that the user says, my balance, the bot knows to interpret it within the context of the checking context. So the checking balance intent in this case has an input context of checking. And we know the bot knows that we're talking about the checking account and it replies with your balance is $1,000. So I took this example and implemented it in Dialogflow and I added another account type, a savings account to really see it in action. Um, so here we have the checking info and the savings info intents and they contain some basic training phrases. I want information about my checking account Okay, so now we know that we want to talk about the checking account and the output uh, context is checking. So here by setting the output context, we communicate to the conversation to the bot that, okay, the context now is the checking account. The savings info intent is the same. It's just got the savings uh, output as a savings context as an output. And then the two other intents that we have here is balance. And they just have a, a training phrase of balance to indicate, okay, for the user to indicate, I want to speak about my balance. 
but then the input context of either checking for checking balance must be met or saving the saving context for the saving balance intent in which case either one of those gets triggered but if i just type balance here without any context the bot um, doesn't understand it and go goes to the fallback intent so in order for one of those intents to be triggered the context has to be present so if i now tell the bot uh, I want to talk about my checking account. We can see that it goes to the checking info intent and the checking context is set here. And if I now tell it balance, it will know to go to the checking balance intent and it will tell me the balance of my checking account. Now I can do the same for the savings account. And here we now can see that two contexts are set at the same time. So what happens if I now uh, inquire about my balance? So in this case, dialog flow will default to the latest context that was added to the conversation and it will know, okay, this uh, user wants to know about the savings account. So yeah, here's the output. Here's the balance of the savings account. In practice, I would try to avoid overlapping contexts like this because in this simple example, it works. But if you have a more complex bot, it will uh, easily get chaotic and it will become a bit unpredictable. So what I would generally recommend is that you set the output uh, lifespan here to one. So you can see if I add a new input context, also the same context will be set as an output basically going with the notion that if I have an intent that has a specific context in the conversation, it might be, I might want to keep the context uh, for other intents. And the basic, the default lifespan is here, which means five steps in the conversation, this context will be kept. If no other intent is triggered in the meantime, that has the same output context. So five steps, what does that mean? Um, uh, five steps basically means I, as the user, I can uh, give five times an input and there will be five answers by the bot. For a limited use case though, like this, where I really only have one action to do once the context has been set, I can inquire about my balance. There's nothing else to do. I would recommend keeping the lifespan as short as possible. And so in this case, it's a lifespan of one. And then I avoid this, this overlap. However, because we started with the checking um, context, the overlapping context is set. Um, and we can see here, yeah, so the lifespan is five and that's why we got the overlap. Okay, so that's it for the basic intro. And in the next video, I will go into a bit more depth with a more complicated example.